My name is Amir Kushani. I'm Assistant Professor of Ophthalmology at the USC Roski Eye Institute in Los Angeles, California. What did you present at Arvo this year? So at Arvo this year, we're presenting uh, our interim results for a Phase 1, 2A safety study um, of a novel treatment for dry age-related macular degeneration. What is your approach for treating dry AMD? Dry AMD uh, is one of the major unmet medical needs uh, uh, in ophthalmology. Um, it's one of the leading causes of blindness among the elderly and also in the Western world. Um, what happens in dry AMD is as the disease progresses, it causes a condition called geographic atrophy. Um, and that's largely due to death of a single cell layer uh, in the retina. It's called the retinal pigment epithelium. So our approach has been to develop new retinal pigment epithelial cells from stem cells um, and try to replace that area of geographic atrophy where the patient's own retinal pigment epithelial cells have been lost. Uh, a couple of groups have tried different approaches to this, and our approach does have some new and unique uh, advantages to it, we think. But it's still experimental, so that's why we're testing it. What type of stem cells are you using? So there's a couple of approaches that have been tried. Our, our cells are from an H9 embryonic stem cell line that are derived from humans. Um, other people have tried the approach with induced pluripotent stem cells, um, but for this purpose we, we're using human embryonic stem cells. Are you currently conducting the clinical trial? Yeah, so what we're presenting today is are the interim results, so it's not the final results, um, from a phase 1-2A study. And what that means basically um, is that uh, we've worked with the FDA to design a study that is uh, looking at the safety um, of this implant. Um, and it's a very small study. It's designed to look at about 20 subjects um, to see if all of the preclinical work we've done um, is actually panning out and if it'll be safe in humans. Uh, we do have some preliminary uh, uh, design to look at efficacy, um, but that would be done in a much larger phase two study uh, that would hopefully follow this. What are your interim results thus far? Our interim results were actually very encouraging. Um, we did have some uh, bleeding or hemorrhaging that resulted, but that's kind of to be expected from the course of surgery uh, that's required to implant the cells. Um, overall, the patients uh, did very well. Uh, in this phase one to a study, we recruited patients who have really advanced disease, because by design, that's where we test safety. Um, and what we saw was that one of the patients, even though they've had very advanced disease, actually improved by 17 letters uh, in their visual acuity. Um, and two of the subjects actually demonstrated signs of improvement in visual function. Um, and that means that they couldn't necessarily read better, um, but when we tested the function of their retina using various kinds of sensitivity tests, uh, they actually showed improvements in how that retina that was or overlying the implant responded to light. So it's very encouraging um, and it means that at least the implant is safe, it's not doing harm, um, and it's well tolerated. Uh, it was done on an outpatient procedure, so patients came in, had the surgery, left the same day. Um, and so that's very encouraging to us. Uh, the patients will reach their endpoint, which is a one-year endpoint for all of the patients that have been implanted this year, and uh, we'll be able to do a final analysis of all the patients, uh, hopefully by the end of this year. What type of procedure is it? It's one of the unique things about our uh, this method. Uh, it's a actually uh, a single cell layer that we're implanting, so it's not a cell suspension. Um, there's been reports of methods where they try to inject suspensions of cells uh, into various parts of the eye, uh, and those reports have also been shown to be safe, which is great news. Um, but one of the problems is that when you inject cell suspensions, the cells don't automatically form the normal anatomy that they should um, or that they're found in, in the, natively in the human body. So one of the advantages of this approach is we took human embryonic stem cells and we actually plated them and seated them on a very thin plastic sheet called perylene. Um, and that's used for a lot of different types of implants in the body, so we know it's safe. Um, and that allows the cells to actually form a single cell layer, much like the native RPE cells are, retinal pigment epithelial cells are in the human body. Um, so we're implanting literally one sheet of cells exactly in the area of geographic atrophy where the patient's own cells are missing. And that's actually very unique for this study and for the field. So what are the next steps in this trial? So the next steps are to finish observing the 
performance of the group uh, as a whole. Um, and we implanted 16 patients um, out of the 20, um, and we're currently waiting for all of them to reach 365-day endpoint. Um, by design, we have to wait to that point to make our assessments of safety and potentially any early signs of efficacy. Uh, once we have all that data, we can then decide how we're going to proceed with a phase two. Um, but because our study has gone very well, we've actually felt like we don't need to recruit more than 16 at this point, um, and we're actually already in the planning stages for a phase two, uh, two B study. Will you be recruiting for more patients in the next phase? Well, we could potentially recruit more patients, um, uh, but at this point the sponsor feels confident enough in the results um, that they're actually starting to plan for the Phase 2B study, um, and it's really at their discretion whether they want to recruit more patients. Um, in regards to patient care, would this procedure be viable for everyone with geographic atrophy, or what would be the requirements? That's a great question, and that's something we want to figure out um, as we go forward. So as I mentioned, in this phase one, 2A study, we're looking at patients who have very advanced disease, because um, by design, we want to make sure we don't you know, do any harm. Um, and so those patients um, actually have very low vision, and they're very chronically affected by the disease. Um, but as we proceed to future trials, what we're going to do is enroll er better and better visual acuity um, and smaller areas of geographic atrophy. Um, and those patients, because they've had the disease for a less prolonged period of time, likely have more potential for improvement. Uh, one of the things that happens in geographic atrophy is that after that retinal pigment epithelial cell layer dies, um, the overlying cells or the photoreceptors, which are the light sensing cells in the eye, those also tend to atrophy uh, and disappear over time. So if you've had the disease for a very long period of time, replacing the retinal pigment epithelium is probably less likely to improve your vision just because the overlying cells, the photoreceptors, are also gone by that point. So as you suggested, going into patients who have less advanced disease and less severe vision loss uh, is definitely something we're interested in doing uh, as we demonstrate the safety of the implant and the surgery. How long before this treatment could be considered standard of care? So we have to do our phase, we have to finish our phase 1, 2A uh, study, and we, then we have to plan and, and execute a phase 2B study. Um, so we're at least several years away from uh, completing such a phase 2B study. Um, and uh, so it's hard to predict exactly when uh, or if it will be a treatment. But certainly um, it's a major unmet medical need and uh, it's very worthwhile to pursue. Are there any other projects you're working on in your lab that you'd like to share? Uh, yes, yeah, so our group works on a couple of different uh, technologies. Um, we also work on novel ways of looking at how the retina uh, changes in disease. Um, and that becomes very relevant when, for example, you're implanting these uh, uh, human embryonic stem cell derived RPE into the human body because you want to assess how are they functioning, how, are they, how is this local tissue sur uh, surrounding the implant um, responding to the implant. Um, and uh, like I mentioned before, how is the retina uh, actually responding in, in functionally um, to the implant? So we work a lot uh, on OCT technologies or optical coherence tomography based technologies to assess both the structure of the retina and also the vasculature in the retina. Uh, one of the other things that we presented at the uh, Arvo imaging meeting this year is a way to look at the vasculature of the retina using OCT angiography uh, in three dimensions. Um, currently, OCT angiography is used largely in 2D on FOSS uh, imaging methods, which means we take three-dimensional information and we look at it in two dimensions. Um, but we presented a method of perhaps looking at three-dimensional data and be able, being able to better understand how those retinal vascular changes might be impacted in diseases like diabetic retinopathy. Where can people follow your research? Uh, that's a great question. So uh, we do have a website on uh, the USC Roski Eye Institute that summarizes some of the work and also has some of our publications. And we're actually in the process of developing a web page uh, for our lab group so that people can learn more about what we do.